So um, they can, this is just an object disclosure pattern. It's the simplest way to express a secure object. You can do all the same kinds of security with classes with appropriate use of freeze. Um, but the basic idea here is um, uh, this is making a count object that has an inker decker method. Um, and, it's in, and the harden is just an abstraction over object.freeze. Uh, and the thing that you can do with a counter like this is give the increment function to an entry guard and the decrement function to an exit guard so that the entry guard can count those uh, entering a chamber and the exit guard can count those exiting a chamber. So the count is, the, are, is, is those things still in the chamber. And if you do something like this, what you would naively expect, which is what we want to actually make possible, is that the entry guard only has the ability to increment the counter and nothing else. And the exit guard only has the ability to decrement the counter. JavaScript is uniquely suitable among industrial languages for going in this direction. Uh, when I got involved in JavaScript, it was on uh, ECMAScript 3, and all of these attributes were already true in ECMAScript 3, uh, which is uh, Conway's law is that a, a, the, essentially the modularity of a system reflects the modularity of the organization that creates the system. Uh, the, uh, the historical accident is that uh, JavaScript was standardized by this committee under ECMA, while the browser API was standardized on, under W3C, even though for the first decade of its life, JavaScript was used essentially only by the browser, the organizational split led to a uh, JavaScript being protected from, from, from uh, having too many browser concepts folded into the language. In particular, the uh, JavaScript language uh, essentially has no I.O. Only the host provides I.O. The JavaScript code gets to host objects initially only by global scope lookup. So if you can intercept the global scope lookup, you can virtualize the entirety of the host uh, and therefore virtualize and control the ability of any of that code to cause effects on the world outside of itself. Uh, in addition, the primordial objects, the objects that are implicitly shared by a bunch of JavaScript code linked together, has almost no hidden state, i.e. no mutable state in internal slots rather than mutable state in properties. Almost all the mutable state in the primordials are in the properties. And therefore, uh, you, if you can, if you freeze all of the primordial objects uh, and you do something about the evaluators, which I'll come back to, uh, then uh, you also prevent each individual object from causing effects outside of itself. And by uh, properly control and, and more realistically, as Kamalas was showing, uh, you prevent a module which, uh, and a package from causing effects outside of itself while being linked together. So uh, these are the, primor the primordial objects, the ones that exist before code starts to run. Um, uh, the, uh, in addition, there's a global object uh, which has these um, uh, obviously global property names that point at various global objects, and those global property names are aliased to uh, the global scope for variable lookup. And there's a special relationship of the evaluators to the global object, which is um, uh, those evaluators evaluate code with those with it's the free variables of that code being looked up as in properties of the global object. So uh, CES does two things. It freezes all the primordials, and it introduces a, a new API for creating a compartment 
A compartment, which are the yellow boxes shown here, uh, are uh, environments that are technically realms in the sense of an execution environment with its own global scope. So each one of those things has its own global object. Uh, and that's the way in which Kumavis is able to give different modules different global variables because they're executing with different global objects. And each compartment also has its own evaluators. Uh, the crucial thing is that these compartments are featherweight. They get everything else from the root realm that they were created within. So, um, uh, so since compartments are technically also realms, uh, we call the brand new set of primordials, the, the kind of thing you get in the browser when you do a, a new same origin iframe, we call that a root realm. Uh, and the kind of uh, realm that, that inherits all of its primordials from a root realm, we call that a compartment. But they're both technically realms. JavaScript runs on a variety of hosts. There's four primary kinds of hosts that are represented here on the committee. The browser, of course, um, the single machine server, which is primarily node, uh, embedded devices, and now blockchain. And on all of these, uh, CES is now a major factor, has gotten major adoption and relevance. So Agora cooperated with Salesforce uh, in creating the SES shim that uh, Salesforce is counting on for security in their locker service, which is supporting a developer ecosystem of 5 million developers. Node Core is incorporating uh, many elements of CES uh, to, to more directly support uh, these uh, security properties and do it in a very coordinating way. Uh, and I want to really call out the tremendous help that Bradley, uh, uh, Bradley Farias uh, of GoDaddy and one of the keynote people has been doing in collaboration with us uh, on that, um, as well as Guy Bedford. Uh, there's Embedded uh, that we heard on, the, um, on Tuesday from uh, the piece, as, as, um, uh, as Peter reported, TC53, the standards organization of JavaScript for Embedded, is standardizing on SES itself explicitly as the JavaScript to use for embedded devices uh, so that different modules can be privileged separated from each other. And uh, XS already comes out of the box with a configuration that is just SES, that is standalone SES, where there's no full un unsafe JavaScript for the code to potentially escape to. So there's, 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 um, don't have to worry about a flaw in the containment mechanism if there's no, there's no unsecured JavaScript uh, that the SES is built out of. Of course, Goric is bringing uh, JavaScript to blockchain, and of course, the JavaScript they're bring to, bringing to blockchain is SES, and we're already a testnet doing that. Uh, and you've also uh, heard from Kumavis, uh, MetaMask is the primary user interface framework that people use to build user interfaces for interfacing with existing blockchains. Um, so, the reason why this is a status update and we're not asking for stage advancement at this time is that our sense of the boundaries between the different proposals are changing. We started with a three layer um, conception of how we wanted to proceed forward where we had a Realm API on the bottom, Frozen Realms API on top, and then uh, where Cess would build on Frozen Realms and Frozen Realms would, be on, would build on Realms. Uh, as development in these various uh, companies in collaboration with each other moved forward, what we found was, first of all, that the, the attributes of the frozen realm kind of disappeared into realms and sets to where it didn't make sense to have three layers anymore. So the thing that was the frozen realms proposal was now simply the SES proposal. 
And then, our conception of the boundary between the Realm API and the CES API has also changed, uh, mostly as a result of trying to do quality support for standard ECMAScript modules in a way that's consistent and supportive of all of the goals of SES. Um, uh, the initial, the, the status when SES was built on the Realm API is one where you had one API both for creating new root realms as well as for creating compartments within a root realm. Uh, that prevents SES from being used in environments like XS on embedded or like workers in the browser where there are not multiple root realms. And the ability to, so, so uh, the separation here is more that the realms API is more about creating root realms and about enabling some JavaScript code to act as host to other JavaScript code, code that it's controlling. Um, uh, and that's only applicable in environments in which it is possible to create multiple root realms. Um, and then the SES compartment mechanism um, is more about operating within a secure root realm and creating multiple compartments within a root realm. Compartments as a mechanism is actually orthogonal from the security considerations of whether or not you block down the primordials, but there's no use case that we've identified for using compartments outside of CES. Um, and in fact, in the multiple configuration, it, uh, it's exactly the use of the compartment API uh, that triggers uh, the uh, 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 is the signal that the XS configuration uses uh, to understand that it should be generating an SES configuration. So Node, uh, largely due to the efforts of um, uh, Bradley Farias and Guy Bedford, uh, Node now ships with an experimental frozen intrinsic spot. Uh, which is actually a deeper integration of CES than I was advocating for or expected it would work, where it actually freezes the intrinsics in the main environment, um, as opposed to just enabling you to create an environment on the side with frozen intrinsics. Intrinsics in this context means the same as primordials. Um, uh, Bradley wrote the first tofu tool that Kamalis's tofu tool was based on. That's the thing that analyzes existing code, identifies everything that it naively uses, so you can then use CES to give it only the things that it seems to use from a naive analysis. Um, uh, the quarantining of buffer, and or, pro, sorry, pro, process and array buffer. Uh, the node environment is delightfully free of global variables. Require, which is you know, the, the common JS form of import, is almost exclusively the mechanism by which uh, node code obtains access to things. Um, uh, but there were two globals that were um, pervasively available and, and authority there, dangerous, uh, which is these two. Not, not, the array buffer wasn't tremendously dangerous, but it was there. Um, uh, the, uh, under the frozen intrinsics flag, uh, these are now not visible to module code. They're only visible, uh, you know, ECMAScript standard module code. They're only visible to common JS module code. So as we move forward, um, uh, converting more things from common JS to standard ECMAScript modules, uh, we can uh, avoid even needing to worry about these globals. And in the meantime, we can use the compartment mechanism that you've seen to hide those globals. Uh, the remapping and attenuating of imports, that's the new thing that we have to pin down before we want to stage advance. The progress on CES that we've done so far, including the use of it by many teams in production, including MetaMask and Salesforce and, of course, Gark, um, the use of it in production is based on the security mechanism securing evaluable strings 
and then using packagers to turn modules into evaluable strings. But we don't yet um, uh, have pinned down how we want, what the direct semantics of ECMAScript modules should be uh, such that we can remap and attenuate imports. There's activity happening on Node. There's a concrete proposal from, uh, from uh, TC53, the compartment API done by Patrick at Modable. Um, uh, Agoric is in process towards implementing uh, the uh, XS proposal um, and, uh, and then seeing how well it fits. Uh, and then also, um, uh, uh, in Node, when you turn this flag on, uh, because the override mistake causes simple assignment to override properties of frozen objects to fail, such as um, if object.prototype is frozen, you make a new object and just try to install a two-string method on it by assignment, it will fail. Um, uh, when you turn on this flag, for all of the primordial prototypes, uh, all of the method properties of all the primordial prototypes are, are turned from data properties into accessor properties using a pattern from uh, the dates from the old SES and Google Kaha um, uh, that emulates what would have been the behavior of a frozen data property if we had not, if, if this committee had not made the override mistake. Um, experience of Salesforce says there's actually only five of the primordial prototypes you need to do this trick to, and then the problem pretty much goes away in practice. And uh, these are uh, URLs to, um, at the top is to the actual proposal, where the proposal text is way stale. Uh, the next URL I want to call your attention to, because that one is not stale, but narrower. Um, the uh, XS uh, really drove the need for the second proposal, which is uh, we had so far been um, focusing on the API for creating a CES environment. Uh, XS wants to ship with the configuration which already is a standalone CES environment. So we realized that a great thing to specify first is whether you create it uh, by a standard API or you're just born with it, what is the nature of the standalone CES environment? Uh, and the other thing about uh, uh, the work on ECMAScript modules and the standalone spec is Modable, their, their main configuration for obvious reasons has no runtime evaluator. So the securing of modules by securing the runtime evaluators was not the way, was, was simply not a viable path at all for a minute. Um, so the, the standalone spec is the, is the uh, non-sales spec for going forward on that. And then we'll continue in the first spec um, uh, when we're ready to actually try to specify a standard API for creating a CES environment within a full JavaScript environment. Um, and then the others here are to the various shims that implement CES securely today, um, uh, and to, for example, the Salesforce Walker service, uh, which is using, sales, uh, using CES act, uh, actively uh, supporting a large production system. And now I'm going to turn off the recording and then break for questions.